MG, mm. look, I have been keep playing and practicing game for several months. And look at that, I am among the top 100 players of the game. Cool. Wow, impressive. Yeah. And who is rank number four? Uh, rank number four mm -hmm. is a guy who joined the game just 10 minutes ago with the username MG. Are there more copy of us? Who is the guy? It's called MG. It is me. I joined the game 10 minutes ago and I rank number four in just 10 minutes. What? How? Did you use some cheat codes? Well, no, but I used some codes to automate my game and beat others. But I didn't write any single line of that code. I used something called GPT Engineer that can create your desired application with just asking you one prompt and it will generate all the codes, files and even run them for you automatically end to end. There's nothing I can do, I just order it and it's there. That's it, easy peasy. Now I'm thinking maybe we are already get copied by something automated like GPT Engineer. Anyways, can we use this GPT engineer to sort of automate creating a dashboard that will ask some inputs from the user to generate end-to-end -end ML ops codes for that user based on the user's info so the user will code nothing? Mm. I mean, sure, why not? Then let's give it a try. Let's go. Hello everyone, this is MG and welcome to another video. Well, you might have already used GPD models or Copilot to start generating codes, but when you face up with some errors, you have to debug them, you have to put the errors back again to these models and let them fix it for you and run it again and again, to go through that iterative process. But can we use something that instead of that iterative process of just generating codes, we can just say, this is the application that I want to create and this is my goal with just one prompt and let everything get created for me like all the codes and files containing those codes that I want automatically get created for me and even get executed on the server. This is the definition of something you call GPT engineer that I just came across its repository in GitHub and I saw that tens of thousands of different people have been leveraging it and cloning the repo. And I thought maybe let's start creating a dashboard or application that will ask some specific questions from the user about their MLOps requirement and then the app will generate the MLOps code templates for that user based on the input received through that application. And of course I didn't want to code all end-to-end -end, and I didn't want to code any single line of that application so I used GPT Engineer to sort of test and see how can I create my desired application with just one prompt that I describe my application to GPT Engineer, all the codes and everything get generated. Of course, that's something that I've played with, but I found it pretty, pretty interesting and very helpful then. Let's check it out. Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. All right, welcome back everyone. Today, we're gonna talk about GPT Engineer. Well, before we jump in, let's start with what is GPT Engineer and what is the, the benefit or the proposed value of the solution? Well, if you might have heard about AutoGPT, this is very similar to AutoGPT, but it is mainly for software and application development. That means right now with this solution that is developed beautifully and kudos to the contributors and, and who sort of created and initiated this, you can just with one prompt ask OpenAI model that what is the application or software you want to create and it will create all the codes for you. Well, you might say I can already do that in ChatGPT. I can say that write this down code, code for me and it will write it for you. But then you have to copy and paste the codes in, in your VS code environment as an example. Then you have to create your .py codes and your application might, might have Python code, JavaScript code, 
maybe you have some front end code versus back end code so you have to create them manually one by one and potentially ask them through open ai models this solution will automate all these steps for you just with one prompt it will generate codes files like .py, javascript whatever and it can even run it for you that's it so uh, it got a lot of attention uh, given that it's not that old, almost 32k stars, 6k people have been forked out. So I wanted to give it a try and to see if I can create an application that the user can run it and the application will start asking the question from the user that what are your MLOps requirements? Um, what are your Azure services, for example? What is your model training requirements? And after receiving all these inputs from my user's application, then the application should generate MLOps artifacts and codes for that user. So the user have something to start creating MLOps instead of starting from scratch. This is just an idea. I was, I was working on it to see how it can go far using GPT Engine. And I thought that maybe let's record a video to show you how you can use it for creating your own applications. So let's start. How you can do so, you need to clone this repository. Let me open up my uh, VS Code. Here I am in my download folder. Regardless, wherever you are in your working directory, you can just type git clone and make sure you have git installed, by the way. And then this is the git repository. And I will add this, all these resources, the GitHub repo, everything in the Discord channel. So you can check that out to clone that for yourself. Well, I have already done this. I'm not going to do it again. But when you clone this, it will create a folder called GPT Engineer and a bunch of stuff inside. So let me show you. There you go. You can see I'm on site download and there's a folder called GPT Engineer. And if I go to projects, there is something called example. Well, you won't see any of these. These are the stuff I, I created and I'm gonna show you. But you will see just the example folder. And if you click on it, you will see that there is a text file that has prompt inside. This is actually the example of this repo. And this is the place you need to ask the use solution what application you're gonna going to create. This is your one prompt to let what application need to get created for you. Here we are. So if you open that, um, I think it will be a prompt related to creating an application, with, oh, sorry, creating a game uh, that is called as a snake. So you will run it, it will work. If you'll be working, you can see the demo of that in a GitHub repo. But what I did, I just went all the way back, copied this folder example and paste it here. And I renamed it to, let's say, my project, or MG, or whatever, or MLOps, or Tic-Tac-Toe. This is another game I wanted to create. So this is what I did. Let me delete this. And you will see that's why I have three more folders. These are just a copy of this example. And what I did, let's say this is the second copy I created. I clicked on it. Then I just changed this prompt. That's it. For example, let me see what I have added inside this one. There you go. Design a Python application using a stream. This is the application, MLOps application I wanted to create. So I wanted to create an application or a dashboard using a streamlit that it will receive some inputs from the user and then generate MLOps codes for the user end to end. So these are all my requirements. So I'm telling that what type of information you ask from the user. For example, the user can upload a data or, or tell that, hey, my data is in Azure ML register and here's the name. Uh, or the user want to use AutoML as a part of MLOps uh, process or no. Or what gonna be the resource names on Azure that these MLOps should get integrated and running? What are your CI CD pipelines requirements? And I'm telling the solution that be creative and feel free to come up with the proper way that how you are asking this information from the user. Is it through a check checkbox, through a text box, through a drop down menu, whatever. So that's my prompt. And then let's see how I created an application. So I have it ready. Then I will go back to my terminal. The first thing that you need to know to do actually, you need to bring your OpenAI key because GPT engineer is using OpenAI and you have to have your API to use GPT-4 or 3.5, whatever. 
So you need to export the key here. How? We just simply running this. Well, I'm using PowerShell. Yours might be different based on the command line terminal you have, but here this is the key I have. Of course, I will um, revoke this key after finishing recording this video, but you just hit enter and that's it. Now you have your key as an environment variable. Okay, so what is next to create an application using one prompt that we had and I showed you in the note. So, then I need to go to the folder that got created after cloning this, which is a folder called GPT Engineer. So let me type GPT Engineer, there you go. Now I am inside the folder that I cloned the repo and it got generated for me. And then you have to install some stuff. What you can do, just say, I'm gonna pip install everything space dot you hit enter and it will start installing a bunch of stuff so let's do it there you go i'm gonna pause recording and as soon as this is done i'll resume it all right that was pretty quick because as you can see i already installed these packages before i record this video so that's why all this stuff is already there in my computer now what is next so I'm ready to call GPT engineer to create the application for me based on the prompt that we have specified here inside projects and then my new project folder I have this prompt right well you won't see any of these because I was testing something got generated so let's delete them did that uh, those gonna get generated after we execute GPT engineer so you will have just your prompt inside my new project so what we're gonna do I would call GPT engineer I'm ready to create the app for me which is inside project well let me see if it had projects or project yes projects inside my new project that's it so it will go to that folder it will realize that oh I, there's a prompt so that means there's a request for an application to get created and then based on my explanation it understood that these are the steps need to get created for my application and all the codes and stuff but sometimes if it's not clear what i'm exactly going to to create or there's a missing point there's a clarification question needed it will start asking me so here sorry these are the steps that need to get clarified so it has some questions from me before it starts generating the application for me so it is asking me that provide more details on pre-processing steps and feature well i would say assume it based on based on user input of course, you can be more specific based on your application. Here's just a demo, so I want to skip that, saving the time instead of asking all, answering all these questions. So you will see that step by step, it is asking me, okay, I have another question from you. Could you please more details about uh, this is asking me questions about how the unit test should get created. I actually, to save time, I went through this process and answered these questions, and it generated uh, the app for me. So let's jump quickly to the results. After answering all those clarification questions, I went to my folder. Oh, sorry, let me bring it back again. There you go. So that's why I changed it to zero, zero. I just had prompt, right? But when you run and answer all those questions, you will see that it will create more folders for you. And if you click on workspace, here's the application got created for me. All these .py codes. I can't even run it here. And I asked that create this dashboard using a streamlet. That's why there's an app.py code that runs my dashboard using a streamlet. So I can run my application with executing this file. Uh, let me actually show it. Let me go back. Here I would say I want to. Actually, let me open another terminal. It's easier. Let's go with the PowerShell. Okay, I just navigated to the place that I have my app.py, which is a streamlet. So I would say a streamlet run app.py. Oh, there's a typo, sorry. Streamlet. 
So it will start running my application on my local server. So and just there you go. It launched on my browser. <laughs> there you go. That's my application. ML Labs Code Generator. So it is asking me what is the name of your registered data synergy code test. I can upload even data here. Uh, do you want to use AutoML in your training phase? I would say yes. Are you going to have a real-time model prediction or batch? I go with real-time or maybe batch. What is your subscription name? Again, I add test. And additional, nothing. I'll keep it optional. Generate envelopes codes. Now, in my prompt, I ask that when user add all these inputs, generate the codes MLOps codes for the user in a different file or folder that you call it your MLOps. So if I go back because I ran it before and even I run it now, you will see that it will generate your MLOps code for me. And if I click on it, look at that. It generated MLOps codes and templates for that user based on all these inputs. So I ran it before. And if I click on CICD pipelines as an example, look at that. It just got created for me. The time that I'm recording this video, we added subscription a test, 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 test. And it is like my initial template of CICD pipeline. Well, of course, um, this might be not functioning as is, but I have some templates. Now I can build on the top. Now I can use OpenAI models to further customize them. And look at that. You don't need to know how to code for creating an application, a dashboard, a stream lead, whatever. And it gave me a great idea how can I further customize it. Of course, it is pretty ugly now. But it's a proof that it's sort of working and can be can be something tangible. Not only that, I add another thing. If I go back to my um, projects, you'll see it, I did the same thing to create the tic-tac-toe game in my computer. And this was my prompt. I just simply said, create tic-tac-toe that can be run in Windows and play with two users. Whoever wins three times in a row is the final winner. That's it. I ran the exact same process to it, it asked me some clarification questions i answered that then it created this workspace for me and i can see my enter point which is the game is this one got created so let's run it actually if i go back hey, here's my terminal i just navigated to the place that i have my tic-tac-toe app created by gpt engineer and entering point i assume is the file that i need to run the game with so i would say python Again, I didn't create entry point.py or any of these files. They got generated by GPT engineer. So I run it. It says, hello, it used Pygame to create this app. And look at that. I can't play tic-tac-toe. Oh, it's getting complicated. Now I won't. Another time. Well, it's supposed to be get played by two people, but let's assume that we're going to win the game. There you go. So now what we did, we just used GPT engineer and with one prompt, we asked what is the application we would like to create. Then it will start asking me some clarification questions if needed. And as soon as I answer them, it will create a folder called workspace to show you again. And on the workspace, you will have your files, components, anything needed for your application get created. I created none of these files. So that MLOps dashboard or TikTok here was TikTok toe was just an example. Take it for bringing your ideas in action. The codes might not be usable as is, but it will hugely accelerate and save your time that you want to create your own application. I use Python, but you might have guys here with non Pythonic experience like Java, whatever you're using, like creating dashboard, UI front end, use it and enjoy it. That's all. Don't feel alone. The entire universe is inside you. Dream big, my friends. Believe in yourself and take action. Take care.